get me. You don't understand. I say the tears of the child, the cry of the child is the joy of the mother. Because as the mother sits down weak, lie down weak, and she hear the cry of the child, there is a strength that comes. I gave birth to a living child. If the child have not cried, the mother at the position where she lie down, she's asking the midwife, the nurse, what is going on? Is my baby alive? What is going on? The nurse or the midwife will say, Madam, hold on. Because the mother joy is to hear that there is a cry and not a laugh of a baby, but a cry of a baby. I, am I communicating? Every one of you here, when you came to this war, why is it that you did not learn how to laugh, but you learned how to cry? Because it's systematic. You came to the war, and then, and as soon as you came out of your mother, you start saying, ah, ha, 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 ha. the mother and the midwife will run away. They say, we have given birth to a wish. But you can't, and what? Uh, uh, have you ever asked yourself, why a child? Who taught the child that is one day old to start crying? You know why the child is crying? The battles I'm about to fight in this sinful world. The child come to the war with a prophetic eye. So as soon as the child enters the war, he says, oh, the womb of my mother was safer. But now, here am I in a troublesome war. The next 90 years of my life, I'm about to go from one obstacle to another obstacle, from one trouble to another trouble. So every one of you came to the wall as a prophet. That is why you burst out of tears for the challenges of life that you're about to face. No, 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 no. It is not stupid for the child who had not known anything to start crying. There would have been an option of laugh. And if there was no option of laugh, in this war, ye shall have many tribulations. But my assignment today is to stop the tears. Uh, uh, I thought somebody is hearing me. I say my assignment today is to stop the tears. Are you hearing me there? Are you hearing me over there? Are you hearing me over there in the gallery and everywhere? My assignment is to stop you from crying. Oh God, it is okay to cry, but it is not okay to continue to cry. And that's why I'm here to tell you no more tears. Uh, the way I hear somebody shouting, it's like that person is enjoying the tears. I say, no more, no more, no more. No more tears. No more tears. Let me tell you about David. The Bible called David a man after God's own heart. David apparently was the eighth son of Jesse. And that means uh, a new beginning. David was a man with a unique, peculiar destiny. David was a man that was rearing the father's animal and was in the bush. And one day God raised up prophet Samuel and told him, go down for how long will you continue to mourn? So David came as a result of a prophet crying for the failure of Israel. Because Samuel, I mean Saul had failed God and God told Samuel to tell Saul that obedience is better than sacrifice and Saul came on board, follow me, and then Saul failed God and God began to speak to Samuel because Samuel began to cry because they demanded for a king. The problem Nigeria is going through now is because we demanded for what we have today. 
We brought whatever we have on ourselves the way we want it. We demanded for a change and we have received the change. Am I talking to somebody here? And so the children of Israel were crying over the kind of change that came. And so God told Samuel, He said, For how long will you continue to cry? For how long will you continue to cry and mourn? He said, Rise up now. Because when a prophet cry, the nation is in trouble. When a prophet cry, destinies are tied down. So God told Samuel not to cry. He said, no more tears, Samuel. You cannot continue to mourn. You see, to cry is within a space of time. But to mourn is to spend days crying. So you must understand, mourning is an elder brother of crying. And God told Samuel, you cannot continue to mourn this way. Now, go over to the family of Jesse, pick me somebody. And David eventually was anointed a king. David enjoyed a life of celebrity in the presence of prophet Samuel. Beautiful. And David went over one day to give his brothers food. And when he got there, he met one uncircumcised Philistine challenging the army of God. And David fought a battle with Goliath and picked five stones with a sling. And I hear me. David never had internal battles. His battles were usually external. And David ensured he was not in close proximity with Goliath. So the ability to kill Goliath was from a distance. So every attack David ever had in his life, as per battle, it was not at a closer range. David never saw what it means to have betrayal. In fact, he had a close friend called Jonathan. Very wonderful. So David was always having favor, assistance. And so the life of tears was not there. He ascended the throne. He became a king and all his brothers bowed to him. Excellent life. You see, when the going is good, God is God. And when the going is bad, God is still God. Can I go further and talk to you before I move? My message is very short. Now hear me. God knows the deficiency of David. And yet, he still chose David. God knows the weakness of David. And yet, he still anointed David. Look at your neighbor and say, I didn't choose myself. You choose me. Say it, I didn't call myself. The way you are talking, I don't understand. He called me. Say, I didn't lift up myself. He lifted me up. Say it again. God knows your deficiency, but yet he gave you that husband. God knows your deficiency, and yet he gave you that wife. God knows you are not perfect, and yet he makes you a CEO. God knows that you are going to fall, and yet he puts you on top. God knows that you are going to cry, but yet God made you there. God knows you are lazy, but yet God gave you a position that a lion should occupy. God knows you are fearful, but yet God made you a confronter. God knows you are going to fall, but yet God made you the standard. Can I talk to somebody here? Despite the weakness of David, God, who is the omniscience, who knows the ending from the beginning, the middle from the beginning, who knows everything, still choose David. See that. The last time I checked, I never saw any brothers of David having reckless life maritally. And I wonder how God, who is 
so many science can look at a man like David and knew that David was going to sleep with Bathsheba and yet pick up David. No, 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 no. That's not wrong. That's not right. <laughs> One day, kings were going to battle. David stayed at home and was patrolling and lost after a woman called Bathsheba and then committed adultery with her. Now, fine. After that, look for a way to look for the husband to come and sleep with the wife so that the wife will be assumed the, so that the husband will feel this is my baby. The man came home. Julia. He said, how can I sleep with my wife when there is battle against my king? Loyalty. What, what, what a wonderful man, so loyal to his father, to a nation. And yet, David became angry. And they were best of friends with this man. To tell you how wicked the heart of David looked like. And yet, God called him a man after my heart. How can this man be after my heart? A man with this kind of wicked. later and said, okay, Amid, Generous, Joab, Abishai, Itai, every one of you, take Uriah. Let him go to the hottest part of the battle. Why is in the middle of the battle all of you fall back and allow him to be consumed by his own sword? And they took him down. The man went to the battle thinking that the king had supported him. Every generals were fighting hand in hand. And when the battle was fierce, they all gave themselves signal. They withdraw the other troops backward and allowed this man to be consumed and he died. And then, when I was studying the scripture, I said, God, you knew David is going to be as wicked as this. And you made David a king. And you prefer David among the sons of Jesse than every other one. I said, God, I don't understand. And God began to show me the meaning of grace. That grace is not qualification. Grace is the excessive love of God showered on a man despite his weakness. But God decided to pick him for one reason that might not be relevant to you. Oh, you don't hear me. Grace is the excessive love of God showered on a man despite his weakness. God has a reason to pick the man and ignore all his weakness for one reason. How can God say in the womb of Rebecca, Jacob I love, Esau I hate. How can you love a supplanter? How can you love a 419? How can you love a bed stealer? How can you love a man with so cunning like Jacob? And now, hate a man that is sincere like Esau. Sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. <laughs> I know I'm righteous. That's true. But my righteousness will be defined by my maker. This is it. Sometimes you think you are holy than somebody else. But the person you think you are holy than God prefers him than you. I'm teaching here now. That is why he's a judge. If he has not judged a man, don't try to judge the man. Because he knows the intent. He knows the heart. He knows the motive. He knows the reason. He knows why. And he knows the beginning before the beginning began. So he knows the reason. So when you try to judge a man that God has not judged, you will mesmerize your destiny. Peter, I know you are going to deny me.
three times. You will tell people that you don't know me. But nevertheless, Peter, upon this rock shall I build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. To you, Peter, have I given the keys of the kingdom? I don't care what people think about you, but I've given the keys of the kingdom. Using the foolish things of this earth to confirm the wisdom of the wise. Be not wise in thy own way, but in all thy ways. Acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. claiming that you are righteous than another person. Run a personal race. Don't use your righteousness to compare to another person because your righteousness might just be wickedness in the eyes of God. You don't get me. You don't get me. <laughs> you don't get me. Ah. Shabakato yata. Brakosite yada. Am I talking to somebody here? Why place a man that you know will fail? Why pick up a man that you know will backslide? Why? So God begin to tell me, you see son, you don't understand how I measure and judge the world. I don't judge the world based on your capacity. I judge the world based on you depending on me, not depending on your self-righteousness. Because by your self-righteousness, you are not qualified. I am the one that qualified the unqualified. Apple your neighbor and say, neighbor, God has chosen you. I say, Apple your neighbor and say, neighbor. God has chosen you. You are the next breakthrough. You are the next person. You are going to shine. Either they like it or not, God has chosen you. They might not like your face, but God has chosen you. They might not accept you, but God has chosen you. They might not want to see you, but God has chosen you. They might not want to stay around you, but God has chosen you. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor, God has chosen me. Say, God, I've chosen me. Say, God, I've chosen me. Say, neighbor, I see you. You are the choice of God. Say, you are the choice of God. Look at me. Tell your neighbor, say, you are the choice of God. You are the choice of God. Say, neighbor, you are going from glory to glory. From favor to favor. Shut fire. I'm not hearing that fire well. I'm not hearing that fire well. I'm not hearing that fire well. I tell your neighbor, say neighbor. You might not be educated, but God has chosen you. You might be a dropout, but God has chosen you. You might be a tomato seller, but God has chosen you. You might come from a proper ground, but God has chosen you. You might be butter shattered, but God has chosen you. You might be an improper fraction, but God has chosen you. You might not be accepted, but God has chosen you. You might be tolerated, but God has chosen you. You might be rejected, dejected, but God has chosen you. You tell your neighbor you are the choice of God. There are certain revelations that is for my consumption. I can't share it. If I tell you the way this scripture is, that's why people like us we follow God and we are calm. We don't talk anyhow. You will never see me talk against another man of God. Because I have understand this scripture very well. <laughs> you don't hear me well. You don't hear me well. What David did was wickedness. Witchcraft. And I don't understand. And a man can carry the spirit of God and do that kind of thing. It was a, a raw wickedness. It was not enough that he committed adultery. It was not still enough. He went further. Kill the man. And yet, he is a man after God's own heart. How can this man be after God's own heart? Have you heard the scripture that said, Abraham staggered not at the promises of God. How can you say that? When Agai came, 
How can you say that when Ishmael came? Abraham, how can you say Abraham did not stagger? I more than stagger, he fainted. Ha, you don't hear me? Sarah said, Go and sleep with my housemaid. Abraham never argued. He slept with her. Ishmael came out. The rest the generation now that is opposing us. From the same father, Islam and Christianity came out. And, it's, and God knew that this man was going to do this and God permitted it. And yet God called Abraham my friend. My covenant son. And he did not stagger. And the Bible said, Abraham believed God and it was accredited to him. God does dash him. The guy has F9. God gave him 96 mark and said, get this thing so. It was accredited to him as righteousness. Not that he was righteous. Don't try to show God that you are righteous. Mm -mm. Try to enter into the favor and grace book of God. Two people went to pray. One said to God, you know, I pay my tithe. I do all the things. I give arms to the beggar. I am not like this other one. And God said, no, 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 that's not what I want. I don't want you to bring your CV of righteousness. I want you to say, by my grace, I am what I am. So when you enter into the holies of holies, you come in the initiation of my blood. You come by the excessive mercy that you have had on the cross of Calvary. Because why yet were a sinner, I fell in love with you. I am not in love with you because you are righteous. I was first in love with you in your dirty sin. go further. So, why David was relaxing at home and said, I have won the march. I kill and I cover my sin. A prophet came. Is it Nathan, the prophet? Came and said, come, come, come. And said, good man. Then gave a parable. Prophetic parable. And said, what shall be done to this man? David, rise up quickly to judge. He said, we will deal with the man. We will do that. And God said to David, you are the man. Hey! See, 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 see. So even sinners know how to judge. Somebody who commits sin is immediately attacking the prophet. Tell the prophet, any man who did this thing as part this parable with the vineyard, we will kill the man. We will destroy the man. The prophet said, you are the one who have done this thing. He went into complete kumatus. And then he put on sackcloth and started crying. Now listen to me. Sit down. Sit down, please. The greatest magic about David is that he knows how to commit sin and he knows how to ask for forgiveness. <laughs> he did not hear me well. The guy knows how to ask God for forgiveness. He will put on sackcloth and begin to roll and cry. And God said, this man, ah, what will I do for you? From the beginning I know, you know how to ask for forgiveness. So because he's a loving, kind God, he doesn't want people to appear before him in their righteousness. He wants people to appear before him according to his loving kindness. And so, God passed a judgment and allowed David to go. David left and joined his life. He continued. And so, God waited for David at the junction of Absalom. Absalom was his eldest son. Very powerful son. Very wonderful son. I'm going somewhere. And I want you to see this. If you are enjoying life now, and there's no tears. It doesn't mean there will be no challenge. I told them in South Africa. That there are two types of lights in life. The sunlight. And the moonlight. And I said those who enjoy sunlight. And those who rise up early in their life. And they start shining. And they don't see anything like darkness. 
at the middle of 2027, they already reached, they are blessed. Everything about life is smooth. There's no sorrow, there's no pain, there's nothing. If you tell them that you have challenge, they laugh at you and say, I don't know what is called challenge in life. But suddenly, before they begin to enter into old age, darkness cut off their light. They, that is where they end. They rise up early and they die early. Their glory starts shining very earlier. And the next thing they see, they see sorrow throughout the rest of their life. Before they exit this life, it is with sorrow and bitterness. And then there are these people who don't see any rising or anything. They start their life with battle, sorrow, tears, all manner of battle. But in the middle of the night of their life, where it looks like all hope are gone, 45, 50, then their light begin to shine. Then till they leave this earth, they don't know what is called sorrow. And even though there are challenges, their light continue to shine all through. And there are those who are fortunate all through their life and their night time, their daytime, they see light all through. See that. David now started seeing another kind of battle. Someone say, another kind of battle. If you have never seen this kind of battle, you are not a general. People will come to meet David for judgment. David will sit on the throne and be judging the case. Rightly, with the spirit of wisdom and counsel. Why they leave the palace and they are going out? Absalom will sit by the gate. And ask them, that is David's son, David's son, biological son. We ask them, what did my father say to you people? Ah, your father judged against me. So you see, such a wicked man. He does not know how to judge. But if I become king, I'm going to make sure that that land he took away from you, I will restore it back to you. Every judgment that David ever gave in the palace, Absalom went for them at the gate and spoke against his father without his father committing an offense. Now, can I say this? Don't ever think everybody close to you can become your integrity. Don't appoint people because they are your family member to be your spokesman because you don't know their heart. <laughs> this is a son that is going to be a king but yet running down his father. Anybody can run you down as a king. And can I say, the greatest painful part of the battle was not the enemy of David, the Philistine. It was his own biological son running him down. If you have not gotten to this point in your life, when the people that run you down are the people that you love, you cannot kill them, you cannot do judgment against them, but you cry. Now, by this time, David never knew what was going on. The guy was running down the whole, the Bible said, Absalom spoke against David to the extent that he bought all the heart of Israel. He bought all their heart. David had the spirit of God. He was sitting on the throne. But an unbelieving son won the heart of everybody. Who speak to your followers? Control your followers. Now can I say this? And that's why when you are around a great man, you don't, around people, you don't allow people around him to speak to you about him. You allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you about him. You judge the man as per your relationship with him, not about hearsay. Hearsay, no! Anybody can say anything at any time. 
hey, a man of God is because this person is so close to the man of God and whatever he says about the man of God is because he's bloody related. No! They can be bloody related and be blunted liars. They were I. Absalom was eyeing the throne. And can I talk to so many sons? Don't, don't try to be your father overnight. What 